and welcome to another episode of PDA Dad UK. In this episode, we're going to be continuing our series on sensory processing. We've already looked at interoception, which is our internal uh, senses, our proprioception, which is our external senses, and we're looking now at the vestibular. And vestibular is basically our sense of balance and movement. It actually is from the inner ear. So we have a fluid in our inner ears that effectively is like a spirit level. So as we go from one side to the other, you've got that constant leveling taking place. Our brain interprets that signal and is able to give us our sense of balance. It knows when we tipped over too far and we can counterbalance with an arm, that kind of thing. Our vestibular sense is basically that sense of balance and movement. The best example you can really take of looking at what vestibular sense is, is looking at somebody kind of walking a tightrope. At the local park to us, we have a section which has like a balancing beam. It's got footprints attached to it all the way down. And the kids are obviously meant to hop on and one foot after the other. And it's got little obstacles in the way. Someone with really good vestibular system is able to hop on there, walk across without any hassle really whatsoever, and jump off the other side, land, and they're done. Somebody with a poor vestibular sense isn't able to maintain that balance, and they'll be more wobbly, and they're likely to fall off a few times from one side to the other. It's a really basic example, but that is really what vestibular is all about. It's our sense of balance. That fluid in our ears is basically communicating with our brain. It's a sense that is telling us what we're doing. As I say, it's like a spirit level. If you go on a roundabout or if you roll down a hill, you'll get that dizzy feeling. What that is, is that that, that fluid's been all messed up. It's spinning around and suddenly that fluid is, is, isn't where it should be. So we get that dizzy feeling. It's our brain trying to work out what's going on with the fact that the fluids aren't where they should be and you get that dizzy feeling and disorientation. That is basically how you can mess up your vestibular system and it's a really good example of what happens when it's not working properly. For kids with autism or sensory processing disorder, the brain isn't interpreting the signals in the same way it does for someone like myself who is a neurotypical person. For the neurodiverse, the brain is just simply processing it in a different way and it can then appear that these kids are clumsy. My daughter is a great example. She's actually got quite a good vestibular system. But when it comes to things like balancing across the beam, she's very unsteady. She doesn't have that vestibular sense in the same way. She doesn't, it, it's not a huge problem with her, but with some kids you can really see that it is. If the brain isn't interpreting the signal of your place in space around you, it's gonna cause that clumsiness. It means that when you walk past a table, you're gonna, you might be more prone to bumping into it. That's basically because our vestibular sense isn't processing the surroundings in the right way and our, our place within that space and our movement around it. So it comes across as clumsiness. What it actually is, is a processing issue between our vestibular system and our brain. And that's why it often affects autistic people and people with sensory processing disorder more profoundly. So why is the vestibular sense so important? Why is our vestibular system so important? Vestibular is actually the first of the senses that really develops in utero. And if you like, it's a building block for all of the other senses. So if you think of when you're building like a Lego house for your kids, you start with the base. When you're building a home, you start with the foundations and then everything gets built on top of that. All of our other senses interact with vestibular. It's basically the, the foundation for all of our senses. And if our vestibular system isn't working in the correct way, then it's going to affect how all our other senses process in the, as a result. So our proprioception is going to be affected by our vestibular sense because it's our awareness of our, our place in our space around us. If there's a table and I want to navigate my way around it, having a good vestibular sense is important. It tells me where I am in relation to it, where my balance is, that's helping me keep my posture right. It's allowing me to move around without becoming unbalanced and I can do so fairly quickly. For somebody with sensory processing disorder or an autistic person, if the vestibular sense isn't working in the, the way it would for a neurotypical person and it's not being processed in quite the right way, it's going to lead to issues with our other senses. So our proprioception is going to be affected because 
navigating our way around that table will not be as simple. Our sense of balance is off. So what would be a simple process of walking around a table may be that you knock yourself on it. It's a clumsy person is basically somebody who has a poor vestibular system not working to its best capacity and it affects all of their other senses. Again, this can be seen with kids. Uh, with a good vestibular system, they'll be running around, jumping, and they're not harming themselves in the process. They can jump. My son's amazing at it. He can jump off things that are really quite high and land himself without any hassles at all. He has a very, very well-developed vestibular system. He's got a good sense of balance. That uh, balancing beam I was talking about at the uh, park near us, he can get across that without any worries. My daughter, on the other hand, struggles with this. She won't be able to get across that balancing beam without falling off a couple of times and, and losing balance. And it shows other things. My daughter's constantly bumping into things and knocking herself, stubbing her toes on things. It's not profoundly affecting her, but it has an effect anyway. Our vestibular system gives our sense of well-being within the space around us. And if that is disrupted in some way, then it's going to take away from that sense of well-being. And this is what can lead to a lot of anxieties, which obviously leads to other autistic traits such as meltdowns and anxiety, because there's a sense of not feeling as safe as you could be in the surroundings that you're in. As with any of the senses, when you're affected by sensory processing disorder or autism, you can either over-respond or under-respond to it. So somebody who's over responding to the vestibular senses, if there's a processing issue with it, you'll see that they're the kids who will just walk around the playground. They'll try not to engage with the swings and the roundabouts and slides and stuff like that. They're just quite happy walking around and, and doing their own thing. It's often because it's that poor vestibular system and it's meaning that they are just engaging in things in a different way where they feel safe within the confines of their own body. Likewise, you can have people that under respond to the vestibular system. If they're not getting enough of a sensation being processed by the brain, then they'll seek it in other ways. And these are the kids, probably more like my son, who will just climb on anything and jump off. And they're looking for that stimulation because it's not occurring at a natural level, if you like. So they're going to be the ones on climbing frames hanging off. Uh, it's an overreaction to the processing or disorder that's taking place within the brain understanding where your vestibular system is at within its space around it. Interestingly, my daughter is the same. She's actually one who seeks out all of these different inputs. She likes hanging off things and she likes going on roundabouts and spinning around. It dates back to when she was a baby. She wouldn't sleep if we weren't rocking her cot. The minute we stopped rocking her cot, we had a little Moses basket on a rocker. The minute that stopped, that was when she would wake up. She needed that sensation to be in place for her to feel safe in her own place around her. These are the kids who like swinging in um, the, the baby chairs and the rockers and stuff like that. It's often an early sign of issues to come with the vestibular system down the track. They're, they're the under responsive and so they're overcompensating and seeking more input. Um, babies tend to like this sort of stuff anyway. You're like, you know, rocking a baby to sleep and stuff like that. It's, it's creating that vestibular security. But as time goes on, if it's not developing in the correct way, that's when it's gonna lead to issues. So what can you do to help a child that is struggling with their vestibular senses? It's really, there's, there's a load of stuff available. There's a lot of sensory stuff available there. The exercise balls are fantastic, space hoppers. You can get little indoor trampolines. Anything which is engaging the vestibular system is gonna help train the brain to kind of work around things and, and get used to the space around them, especially if they're sensory seekers. Um, there's going to be ways that they're going to be trying to engage that anyway. There's loads of different things you can do. Soft plays are a fantastic place to engage in vestibular sense because it's a safe environment. It's all padded. Obviously a lot harder to get to at the moment with everything going on, but uh, uh, when they're open again and we're, we're past this pandemic, they're a fantastic resource because they are a safe environment. They're padded, they're protective, and it's a great way. It's why kids just love running around in them. They know they're safe within it. Uh, however they get to engage that vestibular sense. It's why kids love spinning on roundabouts, it's why kids love rolling down hills, it's why kids love spinning around in circles. If you've got kids who are stimming and there's a lot of that sort of spinning as part of the stimming, it's a, probably a very good indicator that it's a vestibular sense that they're engaging. So they are under, under sensitive to it and so they're overcompensating in their physical activity. 
Um, stimming really does heavily relate to the vestibular sense because it really does engage the vestibular sense. It's about space around us and your place and time. Some people shape their hands, but people who are rocking, people who are spinning, those are the ones which is really tapping into the vestibular sense. As I say, there are lots of safe ways that you can engage this. So um, getting these kind of the space hoppers, the, the bouncy chair thing, something they can jump around on. Trampolines are fantastic. If you've got a garden that will <laughs> accommodate a trampoline, go for it, get one. Uh, they've been no end of help for my daughter. Um, she loves the trampoline and she's able to do all sorts of things on there because she's basically learned over time to engage the vestibular system as a result of practicing with it. It's never going to cure it, but it certainly helps her with processing on an everyday level. Her balance is improved in general as a result of the fact that she gets to go and just jump on the trampoline and has sort of learnt her place in that. It keys straight into her proprioceptive uh, senses. As I say, the vestibular sense is the building block. So every other sense that we have is built on top of it. Um, how we reach out and touch something is going to be related to our vestibular sense, knowing where that is in the space around us and our balance and able to reach out without falling over because we're no longer balanced. It controls our muscular movement so that we keep a good posture and we keep upright. The vestibular sense is allowing us to navigate around things in a safe way so they're not stubbing our toes or bumping into things. It is the foundational building block for everything else that we have in a sensory, in, in a sensory way. So any of the eight senses that there are, are gonna come back to our vestibular sense because it's our sense of where we are in our space around us. So what are the, some of the things that you can look for to see if you think your child may be struggling with their vestibular sense? There's a bunch of giveaways that are really quite obvious when you sort of look back in hindsight and retrospect, but they're not apparently obvious sometimes. If your child is very clumsy, if they're stumbling, if they're falling or they're having trouble with their balance, that's an obvious first warning sign that there probably is something going on with their vestibular sensory system. If they're walking or running in a way that is uncomfortable, if they look cautious or overcautious with their walking or running, that's probably because there's an awareness that they're not quite in their right vestibular space, if you like. Um, it's a very clear warning sign. If they're having trouble to maintain their attention or focus, so things like ADHD actually play into the vestibular system really, really closely. The reason they're becoming bored or agitated is because their vestibular sense isn't being picked up enough and so they're not getting a sense of satisfaction from it. Uh, that again leads to things like stimming, so the rocking and the spinning and stuff like that really sh do show a very clear sign that there's something going wrong with the vestibular system and the processing that is going on with the brain with it. So activities where you're either running around or becoming active in, a, in those obvious obvious vestibular ways, if they're over-seeking that or if they're under-seeking it. So basically, if they're hypo or hypersensitive to uh, their vestibular sense, they're either going to be trying to engage it too readily and getting themselves into dangerous situations, or they're going to be fearful. They're not going to want to be engaging with things like swings and roundabouts and stuff like that. That again is a sign. Another one which is interesting is don't like having the head tilted back. So we talked about how the vestibular sense relates to the fluid in the inner ears and the sensors that are in the ear that basically transfer that to the brain and tell you where you are and your balance. A lot of kids don't like having their heads tilted back to have their hair washed. That can be a really clear sign. If they don't like being put in a position where they're not kind of upright or in at least a safe position for themselves, that's a clear sign that vestibular senses are being affected. If they have poor postural control, it's an unusual way of saying it, I guess, but it's basically if they're slouching a lot, if they're not sitting up properly in their chairs, if they tend to be sort of leaning and everyone does that anyway, but if it's becoming something that's really obvious and it's constant, that again is another sign of their vestibular sense being affected. Obviously, if there's poor hand, eye, foot, eye coordination, if they're bumping into things and kicking things and stubbing toes and hurting themselves in whatever way, that really is clearly something that's being affected by the vestibular system. So the other one is really about your sense of where you are in space. So things like heights and things that involve some kind of engagement to be involved with, with movement, 
uh, if there's a fear or an over enthusiasm to get involved with those things, that's a really big indicator that sensory processing disorder may be taking place there because it's affecting the vestibular system because they're either under responding or over responding to it. Another thing that you can do for your kids if they're struggling with, with sensory processing and the vestibular system is being really clearly affected, engage with an occupational therapist. These are people who are able to essentially is what's called a sensory diet. This has nothing to do with food. It's about engaging with inputs that are going to help to build the vestibular system. So the vestibular system isn't something, you, you won't be able to cure it, but there are ways that we can help our kids to engage with their vestibular system and benefit from it. I've already spoken about my daughter on the trampoline and how that's really, really helped her. Occupational therapists have a lot of tools and resources available to them who are then able to put that sensory diet in place. So by doing certain practical exercises each day, depending on what needs to be addressed with the particular dysfunction that's taking place, uh, they're able to put this sensory diet in place and really help to engage the vestibular sense with the rest of the body. It's one of those things like a, kind of like a practice. So when I first got on a bike, I fell off my bike because I wasn't very good at it. I didn't have that sense of balance directly related to vestibular system. But after a few tries, I picked it up and I'm now able to ride a bike. I was able to ride a bike quite young and so that was what I used to do as a kid, ride around on my bike with my friends. It took some practice. You can engage and train the vestibular system to interact in a more, in a more fundamental way. So you are able to engage the vestibular system and train it over time. So it's one of those things that with the practice and with the right exercises in place, you're never gonna stop the sensory processing disorder being there, but you can certainly help to train the brain to interact with the vestibular system and the other senses that are attached to it as a result. So that's all I really wanted to say. It's a fairly short and sweet one for this one, but vestibular system is something that's just so interesting. The whole sensory processing disorder area of, of autism and um, neurodiversity is just such an interesting area. And once we understand it, we're in such a much better place to be able to help our kids because there are things that we can put in place, these sensory diets that can help to um, create the inputs that are required for training the brain to be able to engage us, our senses in a better way. We can do it for ourselves, but especially for kids who are struggling with this kind of stuff, who do have these dysfunctions, we can help them to get through it. It's about helping them manage their everyday so that it's as good for them as it can be. Uh, please do comment on this. If you if you experience sensory processing disorder yourself, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, it's something you can share and other people can benefit from. I'd really love to chuck it in the comments. Um, if your kids are struggling with it and you're looking for advice, please do get to an occupational therapist. Do engage with your GP. There are things that can be done and referrals that can be made. And please do like this. Please do share it. Please do subscribe to my channel. It makes such a difference with getting the word out there and getting this into the ears of the people who need to hear it. Um, stay home, stay safe, hope you get through lockdown well, and I will see you next time.